All right. So we've uh, we've seen examples now involving uh, the, the previous example was about the minimum of uh, of, of a collection of Poisson or of exponential random variables. Uh, when we when we talk about distributions of minimums, maximums, this is when we talk about distributions. This is what's called extremes, extreme values, the highest value, the, the, the smallest value, the biggest value, minimum, the maximum. And so we're going to talk now about what's called extreme value theory. So what can we say in general about how these extreme values behave? So oftentimes in when we're talking about failure variables, such as we are here, we care about the extremes because oftentimes, for example, in the ones in the examples we already talked about, um the smallest value is something that we're concerned about sometimes we're, we're concerned about the biggest value so in extreme value theory let's we suppose that we we want to analyze some extreme potentially, in some cases, potentially catastrophic, such as in insurance applications, we're worried about catastrophic events. Um, and then in this case, we wanna consider the distribution of the maximum. Now, the maximum of a sequence or a collection of random variables. Now, the in the previous examples, we actually talked about the minimum. If you can do the maximum, you can do the minimum for reasons we'll talk about. But some examples of these extremes, well, before, not to leave it hanging, the the reason why is if you have a sequence and you're interested in, and you can calculate the maximum for that sequence, if you take the negative of every value of that sequence and then you take the maximum of those negatives, you're actually uh, dealing with the negative of the minimum. Okay, so there's a relationship there. So example might be the maximum weekly rainfall. So something that in insurance or you know especially flood insurance, Um, you know, how much of an event do you have to insure against? What is the cost of that event? Um, another would be um, the, you want to make sure that the a river levy would be unlikely to overflow by the worst Usually we talk about hundred year floods by the worst flood in the century. Now, one thing that's been happening in recent years is you hear, well, a hundred, a hundred year flood happens every, every two years. So it's not a hundred year flood. It's a two year flood. What could that, what could be attributed to that? Well, um, one, it could be that our, our assessment of what a hundred year flood is, is a bad assessment. We're not doing the math right. And other is that the underlying process changes. Um, you know, what used to be unlikely is no longer unlikely. Is that the case or not? I think is, is, is a matter of, is, is an open question, but regardless, um, in theory, how do we handle this? So let's let X1, X2 be IID exponential, unit rate exponential, and for n minus, for n being any value bigger than one, we're going to define a random variable m sub n as the maximum. It's going to be the maximum of the first n values. So it's the biggest value among the first n. So it's like saying, well, let's let x1, x1, x2, x3, et cetera, be the rainfall on day one, day two, day three, et cetera. And we're interested in 
over the first n days, what's the biggest rainfall we expect? Right. And as we observe more days, we expect that maximum to increase because it can only go up. Right. Okay. So. For some value of X, for any value of X, what's the probability that this maximum is less than or equal to X? Well, what ha what it, it's kind of the converse of minimum. Remember when we talked about the minimum, we, we said when we, when we work with minimums, we want to work with the survival functions because in order for the minimum to be bigger than a value, everything has to be bigger than it. Well, the converse is, is in the case of the maximum, in order for a maximum to be less than a value, every component value has to be less than or equal to that value. So that's why we talk about less than or equal to the cumulative probabilities for the maximum. And by independence now, what we're left with is, this is a product of probabilities. And by assumption in this case, they're equal probabilities. So this is e to the minus x raised to the power n. So this is e to the minus nx. Uh, no, I'm sorry. One minus e to the minus x is the cumulative probability for the exponential. e to the minus x is the survival probability. And it's that raised to the power n. Okay. So then if we take the density of, what's the density? The density is, the derivative of the cumulative probability and what's another way to think about this well if we write it as well well, first of all, this is just the density. But one thing we can observe is that this is equal to n choose one. Okay. E to the minus x times one minus e to the minus x n minus one. So what does that tell us? Well, in order for the maximum to, to occur, at exactly x, which is what the density is, is giving us an idea of the density. It's the, the, the force, the likelihood of, um, rel in relative terms of the maximum occurring at exactly x. What it means is that exactly one of the elements has to occur at x. So let's just highlight these as we go along. So exactly one has to occur at x. The max, and there are n, n of those to choose from. So we choose which of the n events occurs at exactly x. But if that, if the maximum is going to occur at x, we need the rest of the, the variables to occur below x. So that's n, the, the remaining n minus one of them have to occur below x. Okay. So now, what can we say as? the system grows. So what we're going to do is we're going to define a variable yn. And we define it as the maximum minus the log of n. Okay, we'll see why. And we're going to let y, little y, be any real number. And we're going to define x sub n to be little y plus log of n. So then for all large n, so we're gonna think about letting this system grow so that we have a very, very large number of values. And we're thinking about the maximum, but we're correcting by log n because the maximum is always gonna keep going up, right? It doesn't get smaller as we get more data. We have more opportunities for it to increase. Um, so we, we get rid of a piece to kind of stabilize and that's log n for all large n xn is going to be bigger than or equal to zero. 
regardless of the choice of y we made, eventually there's an n that, that makes x sub n bigger than zero. And in that case, what can we say about the cumulative probability of yn? Well, by definition, yn is mn minus log n less than or equal to y. This is equal to, let me move this. This is equal to probability mn less than or equal to y plus log n, but that's exactly what we define as xn up here. The distribution of mn we already have, it's one, it's, it's one minus e to the minus xn to the power n. Okay, but let's just put put back in the definition. So it's e to the minus y plus log n to the power n. E to the minus log n is just one over n because um, e and log cancel out. So this actually ends up being e to the minus y divided by n to the power n. And something that's somewhat interesting about this is that this is equal to the probability that n sub n is equal to zero, where n sub n is a binomial random variable with n trials and e to the minus y over n success probability. That's just an aside. But what we can say for this is, okay, we can express this probability. We can compute this probability. But now what happens as n gets bigger and bigger? So as n gets bigger and bigger, We define P sub n, which is the binomial, right? This is a binomial probability. What do we know about the binomial? We have the Poisson approximation to the binomial, right? By assumption, e to the minus y over n, y is a fixed value, e to the minus y is a fixed constant divided by n, so that goes to zero. n times P n is e to the minus y over n times n, right? So this is obviously a constant, which converges to itself as n goes to infinity. And then in this case, what we can say is that n sub n is approximately Poisson with parameter e to the minus y for large n. This is by the law of small numbers. So remember the law of small numbers, we did this a while ago, law of small numbers, law of rare events, law of rare events, Poisson approximation to the binomial. Okay, so we have rare events here. So we can approximate this for large N as Poisson. And then what does that tell us? Well, that tells us then that the distribution of YN as we defined it above, which we calculated as one minus e to the minus y over n to the power n is converging to e to the minus e to the minus y 
which is the distribution. This is the probability that, uh, let's see, call it n infinity is equal to zero, where n infinity is Poisson, e to the minus y. So a random variable y, so this is actually a well-known distribution. So a random variable y with the CDF e to the minus e to the minus y is said to have the standard double exponential extreme value distribution. So double exponential because we see there's two instances of an exponential. And it's the extreme value distribution because we've calculated this as the distribution of a maximum. And so sometimes we would write this as E, e for double exponential. Um, but it's not that common of a distribution. So more likely it would be explicitly stated as this is the, this is the double exponential extreme value. Okay. So now let's suppose t is exponential one. Then for every y in r, we can calculate the probability that minus log of t is less than or equal to y. So t is a positive random variable we can take the log of it the log is going to be um the log is is well defined as long as we have a positive value and we, let's take the negative of it okay probability that the log is the negative log is less than or equal to y is equal to the probability that the log is bigger than equal to minus y because we flip the sign when we when we divide by negative one. And then we undo the log by taking exponent. This is the probability that t is bigger than equal to e to the minus y, which is e to the minus e to the minus y. Okay, so what this tells us then is minus log of t for an exponential one has the double exponential, standard double exponential extreme value distribution. Okay, a um, couple of questions. So a couple of exercises for you. These are exercises we should definitely be able to do at this point. Number one is uh, if y has the double exponential extreme value distribution, what is its density? And finally, if we fix K and let M sub K colon N be the Kth largest value of X1 up through Xn for why a real number, what is the limiting value of the probability that the kth largest value, again, subtracting off the log of n, is less than or equal to y? So those are exercises.
uh, worth working on to make sure that these ideas are are sinking in and anything that's not um, is worth uh, worth thinking about further.